Peace, friends. I'm Tom Arthur, pastor of Sycamore Creek Church in Lansing, Michigan, and you're watching Our Daily Shelter. Amidst COVID-19, we are all sheltering in place, resulting in new stresses in our lives, but also new opportunities. This daily-ish live interactive video podcast is here to help you not only shelter in place, but shelter in God's grace. To find God's grace in your home and the practical situations we all find ourselves in each day these days. Or as Psalm 91 verse 1 puts it, those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. In each episode of this video podcast, we get to know and learn from an expert in one area of stress we all know too well. We cut right to the chase. What's the one big thing we need to know or do to shelter in God's grace? You can join in the live Q&A by posting a question in the comments or by joining us on our live Zoom webinar at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash ODS. That's our daily shelter. And if you're watching on Facebook, would you share this video right now so that others can join in the conversation too and find a little bit of God's grace for today? Let's shelter in God's grace together right now. Right now, we're all asking the same big questions about life. Is there a God? Is God good? And if God is good, why is there so much suffering in the world? Those questions cross every religion. And today, we continue the last week of our first season. Can you believe it? We're at the last week of our first season of Our Daily Shelter by exploring how each of the five major world religions, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, and Christianity, look at the question of suffering or evil and God or the divine. This week, in conjunction with the series we're doing in our worship service called Christianity and World Religions, we are having a representative from each of those world religions uh, to join us on the podcast, and I am excited to have with me here uh, Shashi Karve. Shashi teaches Hinduism uh, in the community as a representative from, you're going to have to help me out here, Shashi. The, the yeah. Bharatiya Temple of Bharatiya Lansing. Bharatiya Temple in Hazlitt. Um, yeah. And Shashi has an information technology background and currently coaches K through 12 year olds and college students in all academic subjects, including SAT and ACT, to her <laughs> college prep company, Ivy Ambitions. But I first met Shashi when she joined our small group this past summer that was studying Christian world religions. So thank you so much for joining us today, Shashi. Oh, th thanks, Tom. Um, I definitely, from my end, I would like to thank you uh, for your and your congregation's interest in understanding people um, of other faiths, um, uh, how how they view the current situation, yeah. and in particular how they view pain and suffering. Uh, by reaching by by your congregations reaching out to other communities. I feel you serve as a great role model for others to develop a better understanding of our divorce world. Well, you, um, you honor me uh, and you honor us by joining in that conversation. I drive by the temple all the time going over to Lake Lansing. Yes. Um, going to the Lake Lansing Sailing Club. And sometime oh. I'm going to have to plan on driving by yes. when you're there. Yes. Um, yeah. Can't. Please let me know. In a, if, you, if you let me know in advance, I'll be happy to would love to Give do a so. tour and yeah 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 they're before they're a very we, welcoming congregation so thank before you before we get to the question of suffering and hinduism um what's been your experience just personally right now sheltering in place and i don't know if that's looked like in any unique way as a hindu but just tell us what your experience has been like here recently it's really interesting you asked and and um and uh, yeah Fortunately, or uh, both, both ways, I guess, there, um, I was definitely um, just as affected, my family was just as affected uh, with, by this uh, current situation, um, just as, as it has affected probably every individual on this earth, I would yeah. say. 
this past March, so, so just three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, my dad passed away in Florida. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, uh, in March. So it was, this was already in full, you know, full uh, vigor, I guess, the virus situation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I couldn't go and I still haven't gone. Uh, to Florida, uh, not, not just for the last rites, but more importantly, because more poignantly, I couldn't be with my mom to comfort her and console mm. her. Mm. Um, so uh, she's in a facility in Florida with no family members. She has not seen a single family member uh, since, the, since the day my dad passed away. Wow. Uh, so you can just imagine, I mean, the first thing we need is some close family member to just, if nothing, just hug and console and comfort. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and they, I respect their policy, the policy of the, of the, the facility to, uh, disallow, you know, for, for not allowing visitors, mm -hmm. uh, because they want to keep the residents safe. Um, so, so, so this is not a theoretical conversation for you. I mean, you're right in the middle of this. Exactly, exactly. It, yeah. So it really hit hit it. It hit me hard. Are there? Um, and are, and I, you know, I kind of feel guilty at the same time, helpless, more helpless uh, that I can't, I can't even hug her, make her feel a little better. Are there? Is your was your dad Hindu? And are there? Special, I assume there's some sort of Hindu burial or funeral mm -hmm. um, rites that perhaps were not able to be done? Right. So he's not particularly, he's very open. I come from a family. Uh, I have that, I've, I've been, uh, you know, I, it's a gift to me. Uh, my family's super open. My son-in-law is actually a Christian. Mm -hmm. So he's, uh, he belongs to the um, uh, well, sort of Eastern Orthodox. So, yeah. uh, so we are a very open family, but that is a very Hindu thing also that I, that the people that I'm with, and again, just to remind everyone, my views as a Hindu could be different from others, just like in any other faith, there's, you know, there's a huge variety of understanding of one's own faith mm -hmm. and, pra and practicing. But so, so he would not, He's not the one that is about Hinduism. Again, just like in any other faith, there are some that adhere to Hinduism by way of rituals and rites. Mm -hmm. My family is not one of them, but highly spiritual and extremely compassionate and open. Yeah. Um, I remember talking with you, I, I believe, uh, about you being particularly interested in kind of more the philosophy of Hinduism. Yes. The, it's amazing you remember that yes yes yeah. and the philosophy is nothing but oneness of spirit mm -hmm. we talk about my spirit your spirit but this oneness there's a word for it advaita advaita vedanta and advaita means one without a second the universe is not fragmented divided as the way we see it it is we see it because of our sense organs uh, our senses kind of draw us in different directions. Uh, so yeah, he would not have, but just being there for my mom uh, to just be there, you know, it's, as I said, at these moments, you just want to be, the only thing that you want is to be with a loved one. So that's yeah. the part. That's but the, this is the, being a Hindu, or I think, again, because my views are so open, and, and which, which align with Mahatma Gandhi, for instance, uh, you know, the great people's great spirit, uh, spiritual leaders of India, um, of Hinduism, is that, um, so, so my experience was totally Hindu, maybe I, can, I should put it. So the facility my mom is in, she's in a facility with no, you know, as I already said, no one has been able to see her. Mm -hmm. But the caregivers, the caregivers through their kindness, their caring, their compassion have been her family. Yeah. Uh, at this, during this time. They are complete strangers. They, my mom moved into this facility two months ago. They're mm -hmm. complete strangers. And yet they have formed deep bonds with her and other residents. 
yeah. uh, forgetting race, color, religion, anything that we think of that can divide us. Mm -hmm. uh, they have placed their need, uh, their, uh, the, the residents' needs, my mom's needs ahead of theirs. Yeah. Uh, and, and so the, the care these people have given aligns with my understanding of Hinduism, that the world is not fragmented. Yeah. It is that not the way we see it. And ironically, the virus too reminds us that the world is not divided, it's inherently connected. Yeah, you, you're, you're getting into the topic for today, so let's just dive into it. Yeah. What, what's the one big thing that we need to know about how Hinduism understands suffering? Right, so um, just, uh, so one thing I think is important before I talk about how Hinduism, uh, to how Hinduism, Hinduism stands on pain and suffering in God, it's very important, I feel, to understand Hinduism first, at least the most important tenets. So Hindus believe in one God, contrary to the misconception, misunderstanding, misportrayal maybe, uh, that Hindus believe Hinduism is polytheistic. Mm -hmm. But, um, so Hindus believe in one God, but that God assumes infinite forms and expressions and names, and therefore Hindus see pluralism in that one, supreme mm -hmm. being uh and and the flip side of it they see they see oneness in pluralism mm -hmm. uh, in diversity in pluralism so so i wanted to make sure that and then the highest expression of divinity from a hindu stand hindu's standpoint is nonviolence. so i feel those those are really important to understand so mm -hmm. now turning to our current topic of suffering and god's role so adherence of hinduism believe that pain, both pain and pleasure um, alike, are outcomes of our actions, or the Sanskrit word for it is karma. Okay. Kar karma is to do, to, to do something. Um, and this karma, these actions and their effects accumulate over infinite lifetimes. Uh, because Hinduism believes in, in reincarnation, it is our desires that drive us to take new lives. Um, so, um, so the, and so the actions, there are two types. One, those are, that are performed to discharge one's duties as a mother, father, citizen, manager, boss, student, whatever. And those that we undertake to gratify our sense, our senses, which we call desires. And it's those that are the troublemakers. <laughs> the actions performed to fulfill desires bind us to this world and rather than to God. And as one contemplates on the objects of senses, one develops attachment to them. Uh, and attachment, of course, leads to desires. Desire leads to anger and jealousy, um, which cloud our judgment and leading us to actions that carry us farther from God. Um, so, so, so desires, you know, and, and ensnare us deeper in the cycle of life and death, of pain and suffering, and, but there is a way out. One attains freedom from birth and death, this endless life uh, cycle of pain and suffering in life and death, by performing only those actions necessary to discharge one's duties and leaving the fruit of actions to God, even with those actions. Um, so I don't know if that answers your How question. How does that... Um... Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remind our uh, listeners and watchers that they can put some comments or questions uh, in the Q&A section of Zoom or in the comments of Facebook. And our executive producer, Jeremy Cracky, is, uh, is paying attention to those things. Um, and he's going to bring you to Shashi in just a minute. Um, but Shashi, uh, you know, I, I think of all of the world religions um, that we studied, Hinduism is the one that's the most um unfamiliar to me and uh, that i have the the uh i, I have a big uh, learning curve in in understanding uh even how to talk about it but it it almost sounds like so i i think probably a lot of people are in my shoes in the same way um it almost feels like or sounds like that you that it might you might be saying that if we have 
contracted this disease, that's bad karma that's coming back to us. I, I don't think that's probably what you're saying, but help help us disabuse us of that notion if that's the case. Right. So that that's an excellent question because it's not just our past karmas, right? Not, not just our own, because everyone is acting. Everyone is performing something, some actions. So a karma, the 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 suffering, pain, pleasure, whatever, is a com is a is a is an outcome of not just our own actions. Right, we are part of this network, um, so it's actions from others as well. We know that from history, and um, so, but but each individual is is enjoined to do their part to remove themselves from uh, the consequent from from acting uh, on desires and eventually kind of extricate oneself out of it. So, so the, I think that kind of leads uh, uh, to my point that, um, uh, so, so I feel, for instance, in this case, the sheltering in place, this situation, so mm -hmm. how, um, so if it's not, if it's not just our karma, it is, it is uh, a consequence of, of you know, people imposing their uh, karmas also, right? I mean, it's okay. not just, just one thing. Uh, but, but times like these are a great opportunity for those that realize this and want to do something about it, again, from, from, whatever, from their, whatever is possible for themselves within themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the way, uh, so, so the solution that, that Hinduism offers for this to, to remove oneself, to relieve oneself of, of pain and suffering is to, um, to, by seeing all expressions of the, all, everyone as an expression of the divine. Mm -hmm. uh, not see, uh, one can, so this way one can conduct oneself with, uh, oneself with equanimity. By putting others' needs ahead of ours, uh, we develop a better understanding of ourselves. Because first, we got to understand ourselves um, and, and also see the oneness of the universe and the spirit. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but essentially, yes, part of it might be your bad karma. Uh, but but there is a solution. There is a solution for that, and one is uh, enjoined to uh, take action on that, take the right action on that, uh, and focus to to toward uh, spirituality rather than one's sense sensory needs. Sure. All right, Jeremy. Uh, our executive producer has been paying attention to the comments and the questions. Um, Jeremy, what uh, what are people curious about to ask Shashi? Ashashi, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Jeremy. You've heard it so much already. And <laughs> um, as you talked about being aware of oneself and being aware of deity and of creation, um, mm -hmm. Christians have the practice of, of um, praying and reading scriptures. What does daily meditation look like for a Hindu? Um, so again, here there's a variety. There's a variety. So because Hindus see divinity in infinite ways um, and accept, uh, embrace, embrace the infinity, the, the, the pluralism. Uh, so each one is free to meditate upon uh, that, a certain expression if, they, if that's what they're comfortable with. So there are some that will focus on just one aspect of that divinity, whereas um, one might view divinity as exceeding, uh, because that is the Hindu understanding of God, exceeding all names and forms. So there's, the, so, so God, as they understand it, a certain one view of it is to uh, view God as exceeding all forms rather than calling God formless or nameless. It would it makes uh, they understand it as exceeding all forms and exceeding. So so to meditate upon the infiniteness of God is how one would approach it. Um, some others are um, they are able to focus on God by engaging themselves in rituals in worship 
to view God as something that they would want to offer, you know, flowers, offer incense, offer uh, scriptures, offer recitation of mantras and so forth. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, it sure does. Okay. Um, Jeremy, it looks like there's a, at least another question there. You want to pitch Sashi one more question? Sure. All right, Sashi, we have one more question here. Mm -hmm. um, it is always, uh, one person asks, does your God help people conduct their life with only good karma? Uh, let, let me make sure I understand. Does your God, so yeah. first of all, uh, does your God help people, own, help those only those with good karma? Does, does God help the Hindu live a life with, with the pursuit of only good karma? Hmm. Am I answering that right, Tom? I think so. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to understand the question because um, God, so according to many Hindus, again, uh, views differ, but God does not dole out punishment or good karma or bad karma. It is up to us. It is the, up to the individual. Um, so we have to take action on that. We have to uh, do something about it. God is all loving. And um, so if one wants to uh, be close to God, then so God is everywhere, is the Hindu understanding. It expresses it all around us, you, me, uh, the great leaders, uh, whatever. So, so the you know even nature, and it is up to us to see God in 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 this diversity. Um, so God helps everyone. God is everywhere uh, by according to the Hindu understanding. Um, we just have to, we just don't see God because we are blinded by our senses. So God is there to help everyone. Does that answer your question? Shashi, I, I think that we're like barely scratching the surface of Hinduism. And, and that's one of the things that's been interesting to me as I've tried to study Hinduism and, and other religions is it, just how much work I have as a pastor to <laughs> articulate uh, our own Christian faith perspective. You've done, you've done a really great job, but I think we've only scratched the surface. How would people keep up with you if they wanted to... Um, know a little bit more or, or ask you further questions? Mm -hmm. I'm always happy to answer more questions. And please, I, I always uh, tell, tell uh, my audience or people that are interested in understanding Hinduism is to feel free to ask whatever questions they, they need to, because without, without that, there really is, you know, there's, there's a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of misportrayals, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone, not everyone is interested in, in understanding, uh, you know, the true nature of different faiths. So, uh, so I can definitely be reached by via email. Um, would you, do you, you have me, my email? I'm, yeah, I'm maybe delighted. Jeremy can uh, post that in the comments section. Um, but why don't you just say it out loud for people? Oh, it's sashikarve at yahoo.com. It's spelled S-H-A-S-H-I-K-A-R-V-E at yahoo.com. Uh, you can always reach me at my work email, which is info at ivambitions.com. But I think this email should suffice. Um, this is really my personal email. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you so much for, for sharing with us today. Um, I feel like I maybe know a little bit of the answer to this last question about how our viewers can pray for you today. Oh, yes, yes. First of all, it's so generous and kind of you to, to even ask if, if uh, they, you know, uh, if they would, if it would be all right. Yes, I would love to, for them to pray for me. Um, I would love to, uh, for them to pray that we take this opportunity to learn about God's universal love, the oneness of God and that we take care of each other um, and our environment seeing that oneness. Yeah, I, I think that that is uh, in a lot of ways uh, something that every Christian or person of faith could, could say amen to. But friends, let's, let's take just a moment and pray for Shashi um, and also uh, for what she shared at the beginning of the show. God, we give you thanks for Shashi, for the gifts that she's given us today and her time and her knowledge. 
And uh, we pray that you would bless her out of that uh, as she goes into the rest of her day and week. Lord, we are cognizant and aware of uh, that Shashi finds herself in a grieving uh, position. Um, and it's, it's a complex uh, place of grief for grieving the loss of her dad, but also the loss of being able to comfort and be comforted with her family. And we pray that in the midst of uh, that grief, that she would know uh, the oneness of your love. Um, Lord, we pray as well in the midst of all of the challenges that we are facing right now, that we would uh, see you um, working through all of those things in our lives and that we would know your love through them and uh, that we would be able to have uh, the grace and the mercy to reach out in love to those around us, um, whether they are people of our own faith or other faith or no faith. Lord, we ask all these things in the name of Jesus and in the power of your spirit and all who agreed said, amen. amen. Friends, would you join me in giving Shashi uh, some love in the comments section? And uh, we are so thankful for her today. Uh, there's a couple of things that we uh, want to wrap up with here today. Uh, one of them is that we are wrapping up the first season of our Daily Shelter this week. We're going to take a week or two off and then come back with season two. We'd love for you to drop us an email right now or post in the comments about topics you would love us to hit in season two. You can send me a personal email at Tom at Sarah Tom at sycamorecreekchurch.org. I almost gave you my wife's email address. I don't know what that was about. Tom at sycamorecreekchurch.org. Or make some uh, suggestions right now in the comments. We are uh, wrapping up season one alongside our current series, Christianity and World Religions, by interviewing representatives from each of the major world religions, talking about how their religion understands suffering or evil amidst COVID-19. Tomorrow at 3 p.m., our guest is Amy Pletched, talking about Buddhism and suffering. Amy's been practicing Buddhism for almost 15 years. She grew up in Illinois, and her training in molecular biology and neuroscience led to an interest in Buddhism's practice of mindfulness and meditation. So join us tomorrow at 3 p.m. for that. Right now, whatever your religion, we all need to connect with something bigger than ourselves. The Sycamore Creek has been busy building online environments where we can find daily connection points with God and others. So stay connected with us right now through our digital connection card, sycamorecreekchurch.org slash connect. That's how you get on our mailing list and you'll know everything that we're doing. Friends, don't shelter alone. Connect with others and God at Sycamore Creek. Friends, you've been watching Our Daily Shelter, a daily-ish live interactive video podcast and ministry of Sycamore Creek Church in Lansing, Michigan. In this time of sheltering in place, we think it's important to connect with the community. So find community every Sunday at 1 p.m. in a live interactive worship event at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash slworship. That stands for South Lansing Worship or every Monday night in a church-wide video chat open to everyone at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash allchat. You can connect with us and we can connect with you through our digital connection card found at sycamorecreekchurch.org slash connect. Submit prayer requests here on this topic or really any topic or by email at prayers at sycamorecreekchurch.org. We've got a team of people who are praying for you daily download and check out our app by searching for SCCMI in your app store and you'll find lots of great resources there including past and current sermons. You can also join the mission of Sycamore Creek by giving financially through the app or at our website sycamorecreekchurch.org. Your generosity helps make resources like Our Daily Shelter available for free. Take a moment and like and follow us on Facebook and share this video with your friends so they can find daily shelter in God's grace too. You may be sheltering in place, but we're here to help you shelter in God's grace. Make your home a shelter of the Most High.